Hi guys, in this video we're gonna talk about vitamin B1 in diabetes, okay? So people that are a diabetic type one or type two are severely deficient in vitamin B1. In fact, pre-diabetes, like insulin resistance, uh, those cases are, are also very deficient in vitamin B1 because vitamin B1 is the main cofactor, like the helper vitamin, for the enzymes related to carbohydrate and glucose metabolism. It's involved with glucose and sugar. Uh, it supports the myelin sheath. That's the outer sheath around the nervous system. So when your sugar is too high and you don't have enough B1 because it gets depleted and it gets altered, you can't absorb it as much, then you start losing this sheath or protective lining around the nerve. Then you start to notice the tingling in your feet, pain, burning, and the fingertips. And that's the loss of myelin because the B1 is not there to protect the nerves and build the nerves. B1 supports the inside of your arteries, that little lining called the endothelium. So if you don't have B1, you have all sorts of damage in the artery wall, which can, then could lead to a cholesterol buildup, a clot, a stroke, and cardiopathy, which is basically just heart disease. So B1 supports the nerves in the eye, especially the retina. That is why so many diabetics have problems with vision. A vitamin B1 deficiency will also create edema, or that's swelling around your ankles and your feet and even swelling around the eyes. A B1 deficiency will also cause sleep apnea. And another big problem that a B1 deficiency can create is a problem with something called the autonomic nervous system. That is the part of the nervous system that is working in the background on automatic that controls a lot of your organs. And if that system becomes dysfunctional, you start getting uh, sweating on the hands, the palms. You might get out of the shower and just break out in a sweat. Um, increased pulse rate, a skin allergy when you scratch your skin and you see that little white uh, welting like a histamine reaction, that's a B1 deficiency. And ADD, attention deficit disorder. I mean, how many kids that you know have this problem and maybe they haven't had it bad enough to develop all these yet, but they're starting to show signs early. Why? Because vitamin B deficiencies are very, very common, not just with adults, but children as well. So this is how you create a B1 deficiency. Start consuming a lot of refined carbohydrates in the form of bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, waffles, pancakes. Start consuming sugar. Start taking diuretics, alcohol, white rice, flour products, fructose, like in high fructose corn syrup, sulfites, stress will do it, medication, gastric bypass, all of these will create a B1 deficiency and having high blood sugars, being a diabetic, also creates a B1 deficiency. So the need for vitamin B1 goes up considerably. So if I was a diabetic or a pre-diabetic, I would consume more B1 to actually help make up the damage. The best source of B1 is nutritional yeast, not synthetic B1. Get it in a, a whole complex and make sure it's non-fortified because they always add the synthetic vitamins in there. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies. 
with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.